Hey there once again YouTube. I know it has been a while, but I'm a very, very busy man. It's going to be like that probably for the rest of my life. Um, but I'm still around. I'm still going to be doing video updates every now and then, especially when anything very concerning occurs. I still keep an eye on areas worldwide, so don't worry. Still keeping my eye on things, guys. Just want to let you know I did my monthly volcano update. It was a little late this month, but I did do it. It's It was posted on August 9th, 2019. It's for July 2019. So I did put that out there for you. And the uh, volcanoes of interest during this month's update would be Mount Shasta and Mount Hood. Also, Steamboat Geyser in the Norris Geyser Basin has not erupted since July 30th, 2019. It has been about 13 days, which is the longest stretch, actually. One of the, actually it did, a long time ago it did skip an eruption and it waited about two two weeks in a day or so to erupt so it is possible steamboat will erupt again we are only three eruptions shy of beating the 2018 record why would steamboat stop erupting right when we're about to beat the record wouldn't that be funny i think steamboat is still active though i think it still will erupt probably in the next week or so i don't know why it is delayed i have no idea usually it erupts every six to seven days or so but it, again, it has been about 13 days since the last eruption, which occurred on July 30th, 2019. Over here in Washington State, we have been getting a few teeny tiny earthquakes. Remember on August 6th, 2019, I went to Mount St. Helens with my daughter. Mount St. Helens got a few microquakes that day, but the strata volcanoes along the Cascade Range have been pretty quiet as of late. Pretty, pretty quiet, but you know, a volcano can be extremely quiet right up until it sees a major magma intrusion event. That could lead to an eruption. So you always got to keep your eyes out for everything, guys. And we did have 1.4, 39.3 kilometers in depth. And then over here, we had a 1.8 at 18.1 kilometers in depth. And a 1.3 at 20.3 kilometers in depth down here. Now, the earthquakes up near Monroe, remember that 4.6 that woke me up in the middle of the night. Everything was shaking and rattling. Uh, the aftershocks, I, were concern I was concerned because they were heading towards the southern Woodby Island Fault Zone which runs from all the way up here, all the way down here, and I live right there. So I was very concerned because the aftershocks were headed towards there, and they were starting to get larger, but it's pretty much done. I mean, there, there's only been like, I think in the past week, there's only been a 1.6 and a 1.1 or so, and that's it. So it's been pretty calm. Thank God, didn't lead to anything. I do want to let you guys know, down near Ridgecrest, California, in the coastal volcanic field area that got hit by a 6.4, and a magnitude 7.1 earlier in July, we do still see aftershocks and swarming. Aftershocks along the fault zone and some swarming in the southern parts of coastal volcanic field and a little bit up in the northern part of coastal volcanic field as well. I am unsure if uplift still continues in Ridgecrest. I looked at the GPS data. It's a little bit confusing. I believe uplift is still occurring, but I'll have to wait about another week or two to definitely see where that trend is heading. Turn on U.S. faults. The aftershocks are still heading towards the Garlock Fault right here. We do have a few quakes occurring along the Garlock Fault. Very teeny tiny quakes down in this location right down here. But that's pretty much it for California. Let's hope Garlock Fault does not go off because it could do like a magnitude 8, I believe. 8 to 8.5 or something like that. Yeah, it could be pretty devastating. But not saying that's going to happen. Recently, for Hawaii, seismicity has continued to slightly increase with magnitudes approaching 3.0 to 3.5. I'm noticing a lot more magnitude 3s lately, and up here we do see a magnitude 4.5. One of the largest quakes we've seen in months in Hawaii, actually. But not at Kilauea. Not along the Kilauea East Rose Zone. And not at Mauna Loa, but just due east of Mauna Kea. And we did see, actually, a, an earthquake at Mauna Kea itself. A 3.0 at 13.9 kilometers in depth. But well, why don't we go take a look at this. A magnitude 4.5 at 42 kilometers in depth all the way up here guys that's a very strange location for this earthquake let's see how many people reported feeling it it occurred on august 12 2019 at 1441 utc and over 281 people felt this event remember this is just the number of people who decided to report it to usgs so that's very interesting a lot of people felt this even though it was pretty deep only at 4.5 let's see here I want a, let's do this one. This looks like one of the closest stations, NAGD in the HV network. Let's take a look at that in the seismic program swarm right now. 
Here we have the most recent data stream from NAGD and the HB network. Dash dash location code because none is given. Short period vertical, EHC. Uh, the most recent data stream as of 9.52 a.m. Pacific time, August 12, 2019. Scrolling down. We do see it occurred only a few hours ago, actually. Not too long ago from me recording this video. We see high range frequencies. High frequency event. Very strong P wave arrival. Very interesting, guys. So, I thought this was going to be a little bit, look a little different. Very intriguing. Let's see what the dominant frequencies are of this event. Oh, yeah. High range frequencies, but the strongest frequencies are at about, I'm going to say, 8.7 hertz and 7 hertz. So, it has a little bit of the stronger lower frequencies, but we can tell on the spectrogram that strong frequencies go all the way up to about, what is that? I'm going to say about. 23 hertz or so. Let's see if this spectrogram goes any higher. Let's go to 55. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it goes up to about 23 hertz. Some weaker frequencies going up to about 35 hertz, but that's pretty much it. Very intriguing, guys. Very odd place for magnitude 4.5 at uh, 42 kilometers in depth. Very, very odd. Now, there's one more thing to note for Hawaii. Actually, two more things. Here you have station TRAD in the HP network, which resides on the, what was it, the southern slopes of Mauna Loa Volcano. Now going down, we do see some earthquakes here and there popping off. Here's the magnitude 4.5 that occurred at 42 kilometers in depth off the coast of Hawaii, but off the northeastern coast, actually. Oh, oh, whoa, that was weird. What is this? Uh-oh, I'm getting some error message. That's not good. Okay, so surprisingly, this 4.5 hit right inside Hilo Bay. Now, zooming out, it does say Hilo Bay right there. Very strange place for an earthquake. But that's not what I want to focus on right now. We uh, Spasmodic tremor. Now, remember, if you want to know what spasmodic tremor is, just go to my website. Actually, go to the description box below and look under links. I'll have a lot of the links that I've been talking about in this video in the description box below. So go check that out right now if you wish. If you want to learn what spasmodic tremor is and how it's important to the volcanic activity on the Big Island of Hawaii. Now we have not seen much spasmodic tremor in a while, and it's it's technically considered volcanic spasmodic tremor. Um, <clears throat> so we do see actually one spasmodic tremor event right here. Spasmodic tremor looks like surface noise, but when it correlates to distant seismic stations many miles away, that proves that it is not surface noise. You see it increases right here and has multiple earthquakes occurring as part of the spasmodic tremor and then dies down. Typical weak spasmodic tremor. It is unlikely anybody will ever feel these unless they get very strong. And two times before since 2019 started, they have been strong enough to be felt. I don't know if they were actually felt, but the strength of the events, two of the events were strong enough to be felt, definitely. <clears throat> um, right here, that spasmodic tremor, guys, we did see one. It's been a while since we saw one. Let's go to, let's see, 1248 UTC. Now here is KKUD in the HV network, which resides on Mauna Kea. Now you know how far away TRAD and KKUD are, because one's at Mauna Loa and one's at Mauna Kea. And those are, let's see, Mauna Loa is basically in the center of the Big Island. Mauna Kea is all the way to the northeast. This is many, many, many miles away. So any surface events would not be shown on this station. Going down... Remember at about 1248 UTC, let's zoom out all the way if we can. I don't know what's going on there. Something's going on with their seismic station. Straighten that out a little bit. All right, we did see spasmodic tremor for sure. Yes, we did. Starting at about, let's see, let me go down. Starting at about, I'm going to say 1245 UTC on the 12th. Ending at about 1311. And over here, we do see, uh-oh, my bad, guys. We do see, at about 12.45 it starts, and at about 13.10, about 13.10 it ends. So that is definitely showing the same event. Notice that? These stations are many, many miles away, so this proves that this is a real seismic event called spasmodic tremor, which is occurring within the Mantopoon Conduit in Hawaii. Now, one last thing for Hawaii. Very, very intriguing. Remember how they discovered water forming at the bottom of Kilauea Caldera inside the Hale Mau Mau Crater. Very interesting, guys. Very, very intriguing. Well, they do have a second article out about that. In my last video, I read the previous article 
But we're going to read today's article. I'm going to leave the link to it in the, uh, excuse me, in the description box below. So if you don't want to watch any more of this video, you don't have to. Just go to the link section below and just click on that link to their article from the HBO. All right, let's go check it out. This is the Volcano Watch article from HBO from August 8, 2019, which HBO is now tracking ponds of water, not lava, at Kilauea Summit. Now, I don't know if you guys remember or not from my last video, and I believe a few videos before that, when I talked about this magnitude 3.5 that struck Kilauea Caldera, which was subsequently downgraded to a 3.0. I have that on my website from one of my recent Hawaii blog posts. So just go to my website, Seismic Events drop-down menu, or excuse me, Seismic Blogs drop-down menu, click Hawaii, look at one of those recent articles there that I posted. I did say that one of the events did look like groundwater mixing with magma because it had the same type of signature as the explosive eruptions that occurred at Kilauea Caldera in 2018. Well, those explosive eruptions occurred because groundwater was mixing with magma, and of course no eruption occurred this year at Kilauea. But I just theorized, I, I mean not just now, but I theorized in that article that it could be from groundwater mixing with magma. And come to find out, a day after, we start to see this pond form in Kilauea Caldera. So it definitely seems like there could be some groundwater shifting near the magma system, which is not a good idea, but that's still up for debate. So let's check it out. This is a telephoto view of the ponded water at the bottom of Halimau Mau on August 7, 2019. For scale, the largest pond is about 15 meters, 50 feet in diameter. Wow. Okay, the recent appearance of water at the bottom of Halimau Mau, a crater at the summit of Kilauea Volcano, has attracted wide attention and generated many questions. To understand the significance of this water, we must first gather accurate information on its behavior. Similar to our monitoring of ponded lava in Halimau Mau in 2008-2018, HVO scientists are now relying on both direct observations and modern tools to monitor the water. During regular visits to Kilauea, HBO staff observe, measure, and document changes in the water in Halimau Mau through photographs, videos, and thermal images. As shown in HBO's website photos, the ponds are milky turquoise, or greenish in color, indicative of dissolved sulfur and metals from magmatic gases or surrounding rock mixing into the water. Thermal images show water surface temperatures of approximately 70 degrees Celsius, which would be 158 degrees Fahrenheit. Tracking both color and temperature of the ponds will help us identify changes in chemistry and heating. The water in Halimau Mau is not visible from publicly accessible areas of Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, but this past week HBO moved one of its existing webcams to a site that provides a direct view of the ponds. This temporary webcam doesn't have high enough res revolution, excuse me, resolution to discern small-scale changes in water level, but will nevertheless be valuable for identifying larger-scale events. The measure the level of to measure the level of water in the ponds, HBO scientists use a long-range laser range finder. These daily measurements show that the water level has slowly risen, enlarging the ponded water area over the past week. It's turning into a lake, guys. Wow. Future helicopter overflights will allow us to map and precisely measure the area and volume of the changing ponds. Using oblique photographs, we can create three-dimensional models of the crater floor. Comparing these updated models with the LIDAR, Data collected in July 2019 will help us estimate water volume. High resolution satellite images, which are routinely collected at Kilauea Summit, can fill in observational gaps between HVO's overflights. UAS, or drones, a tool used during the 2018 events, could also provide aerial imagery and precise measurements of pond area and volume. In addition to surface ob observations, HVO also monitors for subsurface changes. Fortunately, Kilauea Summit hosts one of the densest volcano monitoring networks on Earth. Seismic deformation and gas instruments can help determine if magma is rising closer to the surface. Seismic monitoring may be able to detect instabilities in the hydrothermal system, the zone where groundwater and hot gases interact, that, at other volcanoes, have been precursors to eruptions. Direct sampling and chemical analysis of the water in Halimama would provide insight to its source. If it is a shallow accumu accumulation of grain water, which I do not believe is the case, guys. I do not believe that's the case. Or the surface expression of a deeper seeded layer of groundwater. Some of the water could also be from condensed water vapor directly released by the magma. Knowing the water's source will help us better understand the possible hazards associated with, with it. For instance, if the water is from the extensive zone of groundwater around the crater, 
it would be more likely to interact with rising magma and result in explosive activity. Given the hazardous location of the water, however, direct sampling is tricky. Walking down to the pond is not advised due to the possible accumulation of carbon dioxide on the crater floor, which can kill a human being. Oh man, guys, this is pretty crazy. Other dangers include fre frequent rock, uh, rock falls. Man, guys, I'm not talking good today, sorry. From the steep, unstable slopes. In recent media interviews, HBO scientists have discussed how the presence of water could increase the potential for explosive activity given the right set of conditions. At the current time, monitoring data do not indicate any signs of imminent unrest at Kilauea's summit. Magma continues to quietly recharge the summit magma reservoir. Well, not too quietly. We've had a few earthquakes associated with that, guys, so it's not that quiet. And the appearance of water in Halimamo Crater is historically unprecedented. Wow, that's quite a phrase to use, guys. So why don't we go to multimedia, shall we? Okay, let's do image galleries. Oh, that is not it. Oh, photochronology. Here we go, here we go, here we go. All right. Here we have... Uh, is this it? These are the only pictures they have, really? Well, I guess these are the only pictures they have. This is the most recent picture of the lake that is growing at the bottom of High Mama. Notice you can see it's very murky, and it is steaming. You would die if you tried to drink that water. You would definitely die. Oh, yeah. Going down. HBO geologists examine road cuts on Highway 132. Examining the lava, blah, blah, blah. And here's another picture of the water rising. Look at that. Very intriguing, guys. That's grown a lot since the first picture they put out. Look at how much it's grown. Look at that. Now, let's see. Where's the first? The Oh, wow. You can see it all at the bottom of the crater. Look at this. Oh, well, if it'll load. <laughs> okay. Come on, buddy. All right, you can see it all the way down there. Look at that. Look at that. You can see it. Wow. It's. I wonder if this whole area is going to turn into one big lake. Wouldn't that be interesting? Okay. Wow, they've got a lot of stuff. Main water pond, 70 degrees Celsius, smaller ponds. Let's see. Where's the first picture? They got... Guys, if you go to USGS, volcanoes.usgs.gov, go to volcanoes and go to Kilauea, hit the photochronology button. You'd have to go all the way right here. Click multimedia and click photochronology. They've got a lot of photos of the pond that is growing inside Kilauea Caldera. Trying to find them. Here's the first picture. All right, here's the first picture right here. Look at how tiny it was. Doesn't that look teeny tiny? It was much smaller back then. So... That's pretty much it for now, guys. That was very, very intriguing. Water is growing at the bottom of Howie Mau Mau and Kilauea Caldera. Could this lead to further explosive eruptions? I believe that is a very possible outcome. Not that much else has occurred since I've been recording. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. God bless, and I'll see you later.